What's up guys it's the real deal welcome to the channel guys we're week four into eternal evolution and we just steamroll in right now through the game we've made some huge progression um so we will go through sort of the heroes uh borderland and then talk about some of the issues that we've run into as well some of the problems that we are starting to occur occur on the account so let's start with heroes first i'm just gonna bring up my trusty spreadsheet so um week one the highest hero is 130 148 week two 165 a week three and now 170 a week four so progressing along nicely you can see we sort of have oh no actually 180 is the highest <laughs> what are you talking about real deal um but we are starting to sort of slow down a little bit on how fast we can progress um but if we just have a look at the hero so we've got now two immortal five legendary and then a couple um of mythicals but yeah as soon as you get to mythical you can start to unlock these heroes exclusive so they get like a weapon basically and it gives you bonus stats it also um, improves some of their abilities as well so it's huge and you want to try and evolve your heroes to mythical as fast as possible so if i was to restart the game again i would definitely try and focus on evolving heroes as quickly as possible obviously it depends on the luck of the draw and what um what shards you get well what heroes you pull um but you know you can buy them from the shop and i would definitely have some different tactics in place in future so bot mark is huge he has helped me so much with progression um he is built very very well um he's probably one of the best built heroes on my account but he can throw out some numbers the damage this guy does is in sane so yeah bot mark great hero definitely want to invest in him uh randall is starting to fall off for me a little bit um he was great early on and you know he's great at going to the back line for pvp and just like taking out their you know long range damage dealers but for pve content um i think i was using him in the terror dome and his damage has really dropped off he's not doing as much as i feel like he should be able to do maybe i need to rework his build a little bit maybe give him some more crit rate maybe drop some of that attack and just bump up the crit rate but yeah he's not hitting as hard as i'd like him to he definitely dropped off a little bit next shower has to go to anpu literally in every single team um hard carry for pve content even pvep as well he's decent um but yeah great great hero absolutely love anpu just quickly show you guys the stats and the build but yeah great great hero then we've got tony the tiger aka taylor swift um i will be dropping a video on this guy soon i was going to comment about the way he looks um but i don't want to get into that we'll talk about that in in that video um but yeah he is built very very well on the account probably better than randall like maybe i should swap this gear onto randall see if randall can become as good as taylor swift but um yeah he does some insane damage and there's some nice exploits that you can use with him as well so i will show you that in the tony the tiger video serena as well absolutely love her again using her in every single team uh, the healing that she can do she is just a hard carry for all content at the moment not sure if she will ever drop off and then old john so i'm starting to invest into old john um you might think why old john um yeah i don't know i've not really looked at his kit to be honest i usually judge people on the way they look which is definitely not the right way to do this um but he does, to be fair he is actually a pretty cool looking hero reminds me of like cable from marvel cross with like omni man but yeah he's a really like cool hero though but the reason we're investing in old john is for endless battle and it's for the forbidden mist so there is actually a mission here where you need to do true damage old john is the only hero i've got on the account that can do true damage so that's why i started to invest in him and he's pretty obtainable he's quite easy to get you can buy multiple copies of him in the events and store so yeah he's definitely worth investing in 
for this. You know, we can get some nice rewards here. Um, the only issue is that he does like 19 true damage per fight. So that's going to be a lot of fights to get to that 400. But we're going to have to do that for now. Obviously, as his stats go up and we start to invest in his exclusive, then that will become a lot easier. And then if we go back to the heroes, the last person I want to give a shout out to is Orthan. So I've completely dropped Leo. I am obviously he's still a very good hero, but I'm, you know, I've replaced Leo with Orthan and Orthan is carrying me way more. So wherever I got stuck on a stage, I'd take out Leo, bring in Orthan and Orthan would help me progress. So obviously Leo is still really, really good. And I'm using you in like my second teams as well. Um, but Orthan is just so much better like he is a hard hard carry so i'll just show you the gear quickly um don't have his exclusive yet either so even without the exclusive he's getting a lot of work done so yeah Orthan, great hero so the next thing the thing that i've been running into an issue with is gold i've been running out of gold so what i've done to sort of start building up my my bank account is the shop so basically i would refresh here every day use every single refresh and buy all of these rewards i'm not going to do that for three or four days now just to build up the gold that's how i roll as free to play you know build up the gold and then we will start to um start buying these rewards again but it's just you need gold everywhere there's a lot of things like with heroes to level up gear we need gold and it's quite pricey for legendary. So, sorry, we're, we're just clicking like a madman. So, let's go to the forge quickly, running this up to 16. So, if we were to max out all my legendary gear, you know, it's two, like say 250k a pop. That's quite a lot. And we'd become very, very poor very, very quickly. So, I just want to build that up for now. And yeah, there's quite a few places that we need to spend gold in. So holding off for now. Uh, next thing is the commander's post. So we've got four level 30s now, uh, mythicals. Actually, I could probably bump this guy up as well. And probably run out of uh, command points. So let's just quickly max him out while we're here. So actually, we've got five. Five level 30s now. Um so yeah, commanders help a lot. Definitely make sure you invest in them and do Sinsaro's Marsh. Um, they give you, so for sort of, I'd say throw from 25 to 30, you're going to get an extra 50K power on the team, a whole load of stats. And the nice thing as well, when you start to upgrade these, actually, let me show you how to do it as well. So I can't do it on anyone, I don't think. Um, but basically to, the next way to upgrade is that you need to get copies, put in two copies, and then when you get to 30, it is four copies. But that's the next thing that we're going to be focusing on. I'm going to stay away from um, Disa Caves and start to focus a little bit more on Sinsara's Marsh because I do need to, you know, just get more copies to upgrade my commanders. But it's just huge. And I think I already said this, but just to say it again, you do start to unlock more heroes here as well. And then also at 35, we're going to unlock some more bonuses here as well so yeah commanders are great definitely make sure that you're investing into them and choose the right commander for the fight read what these abilities are so you got ones for tanks got one for summoners uh, kung fu panda is also for summoners as well uh, grace is good for aoe so she's great for sinsaro's marsh so yeah definitely you know read what they do but invest in your commanders Next thing I want to look at is the borders. So yeah, if we come into Lost Valley, so Sinsara's Marsh, let's just bring up the old spreadsheet, see where we were. So week one, level five, level seven, level 10. We're now at 12. So at week four, we're still able to progress quite comfortably. Um, I will drop videos on these as well, every single one, just so you guys can see how I've managed to do it. Uh, Disa Caves, we've gone from 6 to 8 to 10 to 12. And then if we come back out and go to Terradome, we were struggling and stuck at level 3. Now we're at, then we're 6, then 9, and now we're 11. So it's the one that we're the lowest at. Um, 
But yeah, let me just talk a little bit about these three dungeons. So I was heavily invested into Disa Caves, trying to get as much gear as possible. I feel like I've got a decent amount of gear now. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to focus on Sincero's Marsh now, get some more commanders, and then I'm going to go in hard on Terradome and just try and develop my prototypes a little bit more because they're lacking a little bit. And the prototypes will help a lot. Um, I do need some more copies and I need these golden cubes, the crystal shard, so I can help um, progress, well, basically level them up as well. So that's going to be huge for progression. Uh, soul mines, let's see, how did we do in the soul mines? So we are 148, 181, 250, and now we're at 275. Um, and you can sort of see how we're doing on the faction ones. And yeah, we're doing fine on these, progressing nicely on those. And then we'll hop into arena. So a regular arena, we're at 31. And let's just sort of look at the ranking, see who the top dogs are on um, global 11 to 15. But it's quite nice to be like top 31, hoping to push up a little bit more so we can have that humble flex. And just sort of see the rewards as well. So we are getting some exclusives. It's a bit annoying they have to be in the top three to get um, shards, but it is what it is. But yeah, the elite runes are nice. Like being able to upgrade your weapons is just massive, massive for the account. And then Galactic Arena. I'm a little bit annoyed. We were in um, Master Tier. So we were, I think, Master 50. So... But we've been pushed out and we're now in Diamond 1. I'm hoping to be able to push into the top for Masters. Just see what the difference is in rewards. It's not a big difference. I mean, the weapon, is the Elite Runes are probably like the biggest gap. But I'm happy with that. We're still getting, you know, these recruitment cards. We're getting the Epic Runes as well. So we will push up again and get in there. Um, for the shop... Yeah, make sure you get res and then you want to try and awaken him as soon as possible. Uh, the next thing I'd probably focus on would be copies of Oak. He is an amazing um, tank. I did buy a lot of copies for Randall, but I'm having second thoughts on it now. I'm not really sure. Obviously, we're buying the shards next as well. I, I would completely ignore the res. I'm not too bothered about that. But um, yeah, I'm not sure what heroes I should really be focused on. Maybe I will start to focus on Randall a little bit again because he's quite easy to level up. But you guys let me know in the comments below who you are focusing on. And then Hell Arena. So we are dominating this right now uh, quite comfortably. I'm easily going to be able to progress to the next level. Um, how I like to do this though is focus. So this is going to be my hardest fight, which is Slow Late and then Captain Mo. Um, so... We are going to leave these two for the very end of the week. Hopefully, they don't upgrade their defense. We can play a little bit of catch up, progress our team, and hopefully win some of these fights. That's how I like to do that. Uh, in the shop, the first thing we want to do is get Helentis. Um, she's going to be a huge, um, just like a, another great hero to add to the account. Then the next thing I would focus on is... I would, I'm going to leave the shards for a while because it's going to take me a while to get Coraxia. Um, and I'm going to actually leave the copies of him as well. Um, I mean, it's still... Maybe that's a one strategy you could do is go for that. Um, then I would definitely go for like keys and also um, these trophies for your collection. They just give you such huge bonuses. Um, yeah, so that's sort of what I'd focus on next. Then I'd go for the Astral Recruitment Cards. Um, I think it's really difficult to get these um, blood-soaked name tags. So I'm going to call them credit cards. The red credit cards, they're hard to get. So there's probably no point even thinking or looking at it right now. And then the other things down here, you kind of need all these things. It's really difficult to choose one or the other. I mean, I really like stamina. Um, the energy for the Crimson Abyss is great as well because you can convert that into rubies. So yeah, it's kind of hard. What 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 do you prioritize? But yeah, I think basically go for the the best things first, and then worry about these at a later date. Just start to save and collect and build those up. 
And I think we've covered everything. I'm just going to double check before we round up the video. Um, but yeah, so that's how we're doing, guys. Uh, Guild as well. Guild is really, really important. Just want to okay, give a quick shout out to the Guild. Um, so I'm lucky enough to be in like the number one Guild on my server. Obviously, it's a brand new server. Um, but we're almost at level five. We're doing gold, uh, Guild versus Guild, uh, Guild Hunt. Uh, all of these things just give you a whole bunch of rewards. So you want to try and get into at least a level three guild. Um, and also, you know, guild technology as well. Start investing into all of these areas as well. But yeah, so that's pretty much the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure to smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll catch you all in a video soon. Peace.